Hi guys, episode 3 of the Trans Pavillons podcast. Um, we are just before the gate of going into the nature reserve side. Um, this is the very last campsite before you go in there. Uh, we've had a day of shooting all along the route and we had a nice campfire. I've got Harold Zam from Polar to my right and I've got Vickers van der Walt uh, from Trans Pavillons, the race founder, on my left. And uh, yeah, I think this is almost a bit of a bonus episode, if we want to call it that. We, we thought it would be good to just tell a bit more of the history, a bit more war stories, share a few tales from this event over its 19 year period. And um, yeah, just share some of our stories and hopefully encourage you guys to share some of your stories. Vickers? I think there's, there's a specific person at one stage from Nature Conservation when you first got this idea of Transpavillance. Tell us a bit more about that, that first meeting, the very first meeting you went to try and explain this, um, this event concept. Yes, um, <clears throat> I was also working for Nature Conservation for many years. So he, he was actually an ex-colleague of mine and um, so I phoned him the one day when we decided we want to do this event and I said, Jan, his, his name was Jan Kapp, I don't know if anybody knows him, but um, I said to him, we want to talk about Pavian's Kloof, we want to do something there. So he said, no, it's fine, he's going to be in Jubertina in the Lang Kloof, this date, this time, I must come through, uh, meet him there. So I met him in Jubertina the day and we had lunch at the Jubertina Hotel, which is actually now an old age home. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> exist anymore. But we were eating away at our lunch. Of course, I had to pay. In those days, the, the starts on Tanara were a bit stingy. <laughs> anyway. Only in those days. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as we were eating, I said to him, Jan, we want to ride our bicycles from Willowmore to Jeffreys Bay through the Bobby Hans Cliff. And he stopped eating and he looked up at me and he said, Yeah, he has buff in your, in your cup. <laughs> so, yeah, and, but he said, But you can do it, no problem. And that was our first permission to do the event in 2003. <laughs> Yeah, so that is almost a bit like a handshake agreement. Now we have to go through a lot of paperwork to get to get all of the approvals and things. Harold, any interesting things that you can tell over? We have we established now the ten years of racing. Uh, I think we're pretty we're pretty close to to ten, ten years. years. Ten, you, ten, you ten rides through the. Are you trying to the add the doubles? I know, like a lot of the listeners want to let the doubles. Can't, uh, yeah, yeah, you can't. Uh, do that, really. We're talking about years, not rides. Yeah, yeah, but anyway, let's call it almost ten rides. Um, any interesting things that happened with you along the route? Uh, yeah, probably the, the hard part is to try and remember all of them um, because yeah, there's lots of stories uh, as as we've already discussed in the previous episode. You know, the first year was was rather unique with 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 your own support vehicle checkpoints that were just on the side of the road uh, everyone stopped the support vehicles stopped and the sport vehicles tried not to obviously drive over any of the riders at, <laughs> on route but um, yeah we, we had adverse weather conditions that year the first year and then it cleared up and you got into the campsite in Jeffreys Bay uh, with very little fanfare or anything like that uh, you finished the race and I mean the, the response Vickers got from from the official is probably what the response you'll get from a lot of people if you tell them about this race <laughs> and what you're about to do. Yeah. Uh, because I think only once you've done it do you truly understand what it is about and what you have experienced and as we've spoken, you know, the, then you can share your own stories and I think that's mm. what it's all about. You yeah. know, to take yourself out of a comfort zone uh, a little bit, maybe some years more than, a little bit more than other years and really experience um, a unique event, uh, mm -hmm. a very scenic ride, a very different ride, and yeah, create your own stories with your friends. I mean, it goes without saying, you, you either team up with one partner or you team up with 
uh, uh, two or even three partners in a four-person four team. And yeah, it's, uh, it's just a unique opportunity to, mm. to, to, to create your own stories. Yeah, I think that um, riding your bike when you uh, through this route and when you when you tell people that you've ridden 230 k's through the night through the biggest wilderness area from one town in the crew willowmore to jeffrey's bay to the beach people can relate to that being quite a big effort and that um i think anybody whether that's a cyclist or not you can relate that that's a that's a big effort and i think that adds to the value of your bragging rights, if you want to call it that, um, of achieving this event, and it and it and it's the, that's one of the unique features of, of riding, riding an event like that. Yeah. Um, because you rode the very first race in your very first race in 2018. How did that go? Yes, it was in 2018. Um, no, it went. It went okay. <laughs> I did better than uh, than my first ride, the unofficial trial run. Uh, I think we did it in about 12 hours, which I think wasn't too bad. But yeah, I was cramping, <laughs> going up the fangs, and I thought, oh, the Mac is still coming. And uh, but suddenly, going up the Mac, I felt much better, and I actually cruised up there. From there on. It was just a uh, plain sailing. You'd, you'd obviously been listening to to our podcasts or our yes, our but talks, our talks on, on, on yeah. trans, and you paid attention. So I've listened to your to your talk so much, um, <laughs> Harold, that uh, I, I hear the first part where you say, "Don't overtrain, take it take it uh, slow," and then I don't hear the rest until the last bit where you say, "Add." You must rest a lot. <laughs> so that's what I can remember. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think what you also, because that you just alluded to, and, and I think we reference a lot to it in the other sh talks and things that we do. The one iconic thing about Transbavians is the, the names. A lot of, like, I think Mac is pretty much almost a household name in, in mountain biking in South Africa. And maybe I'm being a bit biased there. But... <laughs> But the MAC, um, which for the audience, just to understand, the MAC is the most significant climb in, in the race. Um, and it's called MAC because of the mother of all climbs. So it's an acronym for mother of all climbs. And uh, Harold, what's the stats on the climb? I'm putting you on the spot. Can you yeah, remember? It's yeah, 10 Ks yeah. long. Oh, it's, it's almost 10 Ks long. I think uh, probably in the region of about 8 kilometers long. Okay. The true part of the yes, climb. Yes. And I think we're looking at... I'd have to check up, but I think six percent on average I, gradient, I, I somewhere around there. Yeah. So it's a, uh, it's a solid climb. It's uh, and well, it's not just that; it's where it comes in the race. Exactly, well. and that's I think that's yeah. the bigger part of it. It's it's 130, so 30 it, odd it, kilometers. Yeah, it's just so on 132 k's. You strike yeah, it yeah. and you finish it at about 140. Yeah, yeah but the, I mean, the, there's a few sort of. Uh, I think warm-up climbs, if we want to call it, uh, <laughs> preceding fangs. that. The fangs, for example, yeah. um, Bobbyon's back. Yeah. But even before that, I mean, there's, there's smaller climbs, as, mm. as we saw today. You know, you even have, out of checkpoint one at, at Vera's, you've got a, got a little bit of a climb out there. And mm. I think all those little ones add up steadily, yes. and the distance adds up, yeah. and then you hit the major the climb. The Mac, yeah. Plus, as we'll see uh, in, in the future episode, the road surface is quite challenging it's yeah. not so easy to ride up so there's there's all these things that come together and give you this really big melting pot of a, a really unique experience yeah i want to bring it back to the names because how did how did these names come about how did you get to bobby Arn's back is probably the first prominent name and then it's the fangs and then the mac and then we all know the Never Ender, and we'll, we'll talk about the Never Ender a bit later in, in this, this series. But yeah, the names, were, were they, I, I mean, the one that we're going to talk about as well is the Cramp Kicker uh, was named by riders. But are they all names? How did, how did those names come Yeah, about? it was quite interesting. When we, when we tried the route in 2003, there was no things like GPS uh, units for your bike or even GPS's for your car. Those only came in later. So what we did is we rode with the 
odometer, and I had a little pocket book. It's still somewhere in my office, um, and I made notes. Uh, kilometer zero Willemo, you know, yes. and then kilometer so and so turn left towards Bavianz Kloof, and that's how I did the whole route. So every every uh, point where of of interest, we had to stop, take the kilometer, write it down, and say what's happening here. So and we came across a lot of names through the Bavianz Kloof, and when we hit these climbs, then. Uh, it wasn't really uh, at that time that we that we made the decision to 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 give it the name, but afterwards when we looked at the profile, and we said those two little things look like fangs, you know, um, that's where the fangs came from. And then the mother of all climbs, we sort of decided on the on the ride, this is what it's going to be because it is a mother. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, the same with Big Dipper came later when we looked at the profile. It was a hectic downhill of 15 kilometers, and uh, yeah, and then of course Never Ender came naturally because <laughs> it was like never ending. Yeah, and that's almost 12 kilometers long if yeah, I remember yeah. correctly. So, <laughs> especially in that part of the race, almost 200 kilometers in, you yeah, you're going well there. So. It's, uh, I think the names are very appropriate. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, for what, what, the, what the ride is. And, and I mean, everybody, that's what you talk about. Is, yeah. is what, how did you feel on the first fang? How did you feel on the second That's fang? right. And um, how, did you, how did you survive? Did you reach the top of Mac, which is also... A lot of people talk about Mac and Bergplatz. So Bergplatz is the actual checkpoint at the top, at the top which yeah. is the, the mountain hut on the top, and then the Mac is the actual climb yeah. um, of, of Bergplatz. Um, yeah, I think... I, uh, the, what, what else can we talk about, about the history of no, the, but I the mean, things? Uh, looking at, at technology that was available those days, I mean, um, Harold, you will remember that some of those riders had normal torches taped to their top tube for lights. Yeah. There was no fancy stuff available, or not much. Yeah. You know, um, and I think those first riders were actually the pioneers of the event because, like us, they didn't know what to expect. Exactly. And uh, they just pushed through with with. Uh, torches taped to the <laughs> to the top tubes. And yeah. I, think, I think the other important part here is that, and we haven't maybe spoken about it a lot, is, is that a lot of us will ride it in, in the dark, we'll go into the dark, it'll be dark, it'll be a different experience. A lot of us don't ride when it's really dark um, in, in training as well. So that just gives a whole different dynamic to the race as well, because you, you generally most of us will tend to finish <coughs> in the dark as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, and the, I, I think that having lights as a as a part of a thing is to train in in, in the in the dark oh, yeah, yeah. With, mm. with your with your lights and figuring that out mm. um, how that all works and how you set that up in in, in night riding. Um, but I think that uh, the the guys that did it in those early years with minimal i mean technology has changed i think in our passing uh, over the last couple of days we've been talking about all the things that changed we can i mean we can have a field day about how be much better the bikes have gotten since then but we also talked about technology and gear in terms of clothing technology in terms of lights and everything and and then you look at our guys ride now and obviously the times have gotten a lot better but it was possible to be done in 2004-2005 with 26 inch hardtails and V-brakes and uh, torches taped to the to the And probably a handle. picnic basket as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, and having to negotiate the support vehicles on, on the Mac, you know. Yeah. yeah. How many years of support vehicles did we have? It was up till yeah. 2006 still, or 2007 it was still. Yeah, it was around about 2008 that we decided to uh, to do away with with them going through the Bavayans Kloof. So... Um, yeah, and then they started going through the long cliff. 
Yeah, and I think the next one I want to just touch on is the Bavarians Kloof. It is a world heritage site. It is the biggest wilderness area in our country. All of those facts that we that we all know by now. It's just the fauna and flora of this because just like uh, give us a bit of a rundown about why it's actually a world heritage site. Yes, well, um, it is very unique. Um, if you look at South Africa as a whole, South Africa consists out of uh, eight different uh, vegetation biomes, and um, seven of those, or eight of those biomes rather, meet in Babayanskloof. So there's only one that doesn't occur here. Um, but, and that also makes for very interesting uh, uh, fauna, you know. So, um, very unique in, in that sense. Um, rare species, you get these little uh, redfin minnows in the rivers, which also is an indicator species for uh, the purity of the, of the river. The, um, so, yeah, and that all contributed to, to the heritage status. Yeah, it's a, very, it's a very unique space, this, and I think that riding your bike through a special space like this in, in the Bavion's Cliff, in the wilderness areas, it really adds to your personal storytelling after riding. You, you really get immersed in this nature thing in only a way that you can by riding on your own steam on a bicycle through this big journey and creating your own stories. And I think it's something that we lose in modern day technology and everything is to remember to just disconnect for that period. And, and we're talking about 24 hours here, but that 24 hours of riding your bike from point A, which is Willowmore, to point B, which is Jeffreys Bay, is, it will feel like a big holiday because you are completely disconnected and the only important thing to you is what are you going to eat next and how far to go still to the next point and mm. can you survive that and what you will, you, you, you just focus on those things and it becomes a very unique experience, I believe, to do something like that uh, and to create your own story. Yeah, and uh, totally, it's a, it's a journey in itself and... Um, being swamped by the smoke here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a journey in itself, and uh, the journey does start a lot bef lo lot sooner. You know, it, it starts way before you actually get to the start line. And that's that's really, I think, it, it just makes the experience so much better because you have invested a lot of yourself into the race to uh, prepare for it, get to the start line, and then do the race itself. And um, a lot of people tend to be a little bit scared hearing all the war stories that we're telling now and I think that's maybe part of it but it's also a case of understanding that if you are are prepared it's an experience that you'll never forget yeah I think that's that's a wrap for our campfire stories um, and I think I, I chose those words campfire stories and I think the important thing for us to carry across to whoever's listening or, or watching is that come to the Babylon's Kloof and create your own stories. And I know a lot of our riders come year after year to create their five-year shields and they've got their five-year stories and they carry on to the ten years and so on. And it's, it's, I, I would love to hear more stories from our riders and you guys are welcome to send things through and maybe we can do something with a war short story um, a publication or something but there's really been great stories coming from this race and whether it's good going bad going or not there's there's really always a great side of doing things like this and putting yourself out of the elements mm -hmm. so um, yeah thanks for your time Harold and Vickers um, I don't know if you guys want to add anything to to our campfire story podcast session no, well, I, all I can say is that the Bavayans Kloof wilderness area is definitely a place to experience. And what better way to do it to, uh, than on your bike? 
And and I think um, it's about time that we get those tears out of your yes. eyes. Because I'm smoked out. The smoke is now all of us. We had yeah. this brilliant idea of doing a, a, a fire story episode. <laughs> around, I think we're all going to sm smell like smoke tonight. Yeah, and I think, I think the last thing to add there is that sometimes the tougher the race, the harder the race, the harder the conditions, the better the story is. This is true. This yeah, is true. Absolutely. <laughs> cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us. Um, uh, and we'll catch you at the next episode.